At Royal Brompton Hospital, we have one of the largest sleep and ventilation services in Europe. We are referred patients with sleep apnea, neuromuscular disorders, COPD, interstitial lung disease. For those with obstructive sleep apnea, we use continuous positive airway pressure therapy. We also use non-invasive ventilation for our patients in ventilatory failure. And for a subgroup with COPD and interstitial lung disease, we use oxygen therapy. One of the biggest challenges for our patients who use oxygen therapy, and indeed all patients who use oxygen therapy, is that all the devices, the current devices, deliver a fixed flow rate, one litre per minute, two litres per minute. And yet when individuals exercise, when they're asleep, when they're going to the shops, they need a variable flow rate. So what we've devised, together with our colleagues in biomedical engineering at Imperial College, is a device that delivers variable flow, and that flow matches the patient's needs. They wear an oximeter, that allows us to know their own oxygen uh, level. That information feeds via a mobile phone, which has a computerized algorithm, to a flow device, which will then vary the flow, a sort of intelligent flow of oxygen, to exactly meet the needs of the patient. Well, currently we've just finished a trial examining the use of the device during ambulatory uh, exercise for patients. We're going to go on to explore its use overnight during sleep studies. There is then a third study that we have planned looking at oxygen delivery during everyday activities. There is plenty of potential for the future though because I think we could then consider use during acute exacerbations, acute oxygen use on the wards, even in ambulances and further to that to examine the use as an assessment tool to assess ambulatory oxygen need and that would simplify that assessment. Uh, and so I think the device has a bright future. One of the problems of sleep and ventilation research is sometimes people find it a little bit uncomfortable and they find it difficult to sleep. So what we have to do is find a way of making them comfortable by working with the signal processing team at Imperial College and they've developed a little electrode that goes into the ear and that electrode can measure the brain activity from the inner ear canal, which is not the same as the brain activity on the top of the head, but we're hoping that it will be able to show us whether our patients are asleep or not. And it's much easier for the patients, just they can do it themselves, they can put the electrode in, rather than us having to stick all the wires on the head. We've been studying older people who have difficulty breathing at night and they find it uncomfortable to wear the electrodes on the head and so by having an ear monitor that we can just pop into the ear that will allow us to study many more people and it will be much easier for them to sleep. <laughs>